Welcome. This section details income, non-cash benefits, and domestic violence history data elements for heads of households and other adults in the household. These elements are optional for non-heads of households under 18 years old. Income refers to the sources of income that clients access on an ongoing basis. Don't record one-time income such as a gift from family or some change found on the sidewalk. Keep in mind that collecting income data is not the same as an income evaluation for eligibility. HMIS does not require documentation for income and it doesn't count as income documentation for other funders. If your local funders require documentation, collect it separately. Income for HMIS can be estimated if the client does not know the exact amount. This may be needed for irregular income such as day labor or some service industry jobs. Income is collected for heads of households and other adults in the household. Income from minors should be added to the heads of households record. If the minor's income does not contribute to the household expenses, then it may be excluded from HMIS collection. If you have other guidance from funders, follow that guidance and check in with the data center to ensure there are no conflicts. This element is collected on project start, update, annual, and exit assessments. Entering or confirming income at each stage allows reports to track changes over time. A special reminder about income. It is completed in two parts. As a general gateway question for yes or no, does the client have income? And the specific income sources if the gateway question is yes. Income is recorded as of the collection date. Each amount and date create a timeline for the client's income to be recorded in HMIS. If you learn at project start that a client receives $300 earned income a month, the start date for their initial income is your project start date. Several weeks in, you may learn that the client now earns $450. You would then record yes, the client receives earned income for the amount of $450 and that amount starts on the day of your update. Let's see how to use the paper assessments. On the paper assessment for any project type, the gateway question is a general yes or no for income. Follow the instructions to complete the table below with HUD's categories for sources of income. Make sure you mark yes or no on each category. If you answer yes to any of the sources, you must also complete the shaded portions. Remember that the start date is the day the data was collected. Next is non-cash benefits. This element asks which non-cash mainstream benefits clients access on an ongoing basis. The notes here are the same as for income. Benefits recorded in HMIS do not replace documentation if required by funders. Estimates may be used if a client does not know the exact dollar amount. Non-cash benefits are also collected for all heads of households and other adults on project start, update, annual, and exit assessments. Benefits from minors should be added to the head of household's record unless your funders have other guidance. This means that SNAPs or food stamp benefits go under the head of household's record even if any children contribute to the calculation. There are two parts to this element as well. First, the general gateway question gives a yes or no if the client has non-cash benefits, and then the specific benefit sources if it's a yes. Benefits are only recorded as of the collection or information date. We are collecting a timeline for the client's non-cash benefits. Anticipation of benefits or having received them in the past should not be recorded here. On our paper assessment, this looks a lot like income. There's a gateway question first and then specific sources. Make sure you mark yes or no on each possible source. This element asks clients this element asks if clients are survivors of domestic violence, and if so, when their experience occurred and if their current homeless experience is due to fleeing domestic violence. HUD defines a yes for domestic violence as if the person has experienced any domestic violence, dating violence, sexual assault, stalking, or other dangerous or life-threatening conditions that relate to violence against the individual or a family member, including a child, that has either taken place within the individual's or family's primary nighttime residence. How to ask. 
This is a very sensitive data element and HUD suggests that you consider asking this question in a private location and not in the presence of a romantic partner. Delaying all data entry about clients identified with a recent history of domestic violence or choosing not to disclose data about clients with a history of domestic violence to other homeless projects. If the client is a survivor, record one, when the experience occurred, and two, if the client is currently fleeing domestic violence. If you have any questions about protecting HMIS data for individuals, consult our privacy and security trainings or your agency administrator. This element is collected for heads of household and any other adults on the project start assessment. A special reminder is that staff can help clients understand that DV experiences could be dangerous conditions that relate to violence against the individual or the family member. On the paper assessment, the first question is required for all adults, and if the response is yes, then the following questions need to be completed. This concludes Part 7 of the HMIS Data Standards Training, reviewing income, non-cash benefits, and domestic violence history elements.